Hello guys, welcome to another video. This is an array and a dictionary. Both had something in common, this square bracket syntax. This is called suscript and help to access the elements in a collection. We will see how that works and also we will create our own suscripts in our own custom types. Let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Ifan Tips. As I mentioned in the intro, we have here two objects. We have one array and one dictionary. And also here we have a way to get information or specific elements from that array and dictionary. And here we are setting new values to those objects. This is a pretty straightforward way to use array and dictionaries. It's so common. By the way, we will talk about arrays, dictionaries, and other data structures in Swift pretty soon. But here, the interesting part is, well, what is that? This is a subscript. And a subscript is just as simple as a shortcut to get elements in an object. That's all. In the case of array, we are using subscript with an index of int to get the second element, in this case, aptos. And for this dictionary, date of birth, we are using a subscript with a key. In this case, the key is a string type. And we are getting this value where the date of birth of Puyol, Carlos Puyol. Yeah, that's all. However, how this is possible? Let's go inside of one of those objects. In this case, let's go to array and see how this syntax or this subscript is built. Well, array is too long, so let me filter subscript. As you can see, we have many subscript values here. There you go. We are interested in this part. Well, this is pretty similar to a function. This is a subscript format. And in this case, what is inside of a subscript is literally something like a function. But in this case, we are handling what will happen depending on the input. In this case, the index value is an int. So we will decide what that int represent for our data. In the case of an array, well, it's the n element, well, n minus one element in our array. So we will return that. It's as simple as that. But in reality, you could create your own custom subscript and do whatever you want with them. But the common way to do it, to do use subscript is this format, just to get uh, access to elements. Okay, you may wonder what would happen if we didn't get those subscript features you could maybe be ending doing something like this. Yeah, this is just an example that I made for you. But yeah, this format will be the option for us without subscript. That's the great thing that we have with Suscript. Avoid this kind of verbose way to generate getters and setter functions. And instead, just using this short syntax. It's just so convenient. So yeah, you got the idea already why the Suscripts are so important in Swift. And now let's create our own Suscripts. For this example, we have here an array of strings again. Let's run this. It's pretty straightforward to see that we are getting index zero, which is Mercury, right? We have here nine planets. Yeah, Pluto is a planet. I don't know. <laughs> if we just try to get number 10 value, well, yeah, we got a crash because it's out of bounds. Let's create a subscript to avoid that and instead return nil if we are not getting something that is inside of a theory. For that, Let's create an extension of array and create our own custom subscript. Okay, to make a new subscript is as simple as using the function syntax, but instead of creating a custom name, we will use always subscript name. And now we're going to follow exactly the same format like a function with a return type in this case. In this case, array has a generic type element and we will use that, but optional because, well, could be a case when we're not getting the right value. Okay, what we want to do is just filter in the range. So we need an input. In this case, we need uh, an index, right? 
and that index could be any value. What we want is just filter OK if the filter is between the size of the array. And it's that simple. Let's see how to do it. Our array has two properties, a star index and an index. So the only thing we have to do is just filter if index is between those values. Okay, once the index is correct, let's return the value. And that's all, my friends. Let's move this up because, well, we're on a playground, so it's running line by line. Now will be detected by the playground. Okay, let's run this and see if we will get an ill. Okay, we got a fatal error again. And that's because, well, like functions, you can overload subscripts. As you saw earlier in Array, Array has a lot of subscript built in. In this case, it's taking preference to, you know, the built in subscript. But in this case, since that this is a special, we don't want to make conflicts about it. For subscripts, like in functions, you can use also argument labels. So let's use that. And for that, to distinguish the regular one, the regular subscript with int versus this safer method, let's use the argument label safe. You can use whatever you want, but it's just for the demo. Now, the only thing we have to do here is just use safe and run this again. There you go. Now you have your near source script ready. And yeah, we got the nil value here. If you use, uh, I don't know, uh, number two, let's see what happened. Yeah, you got error like a regular way. If you try to use minus two, we got also again a nil. It's great to see how you can build new subscripts in your current objects. Finally, let's create a new type. In this case, we want an object that represents rows and columns, but we don't want a matrix of numbers. We want a kind of a grid for any kind of element. I want to represent any kind of value that could fit in rows and columns and build the axis of that object using subscript. For that, we will create a new struct grid. As I mentioned before, I want this object to be supported by any kind of type. So for that, we will use a generic type. For saving our data, we will use a value data and will be an array of arrays of type D. Okay, now we have the data. Now, how are we gonna access it? Well, with subscript, of course. Let's create our own subscript. We will return type D. And now here we have two conditions, rows and columns. Then we need to identify what is the right element to return. For that, we need two inputs instead of one. By the way, you can add any kind of inputs here. So for example, you can use one parameter, two parameters, or n quantity of parameters. Actually, you can use also default parameters if it's possible for you, and variadic parameters like regular functions. Yeah, so scripts are really close to functions in the format, except for one thing, you cannot use in-out parameters, but that's a nice story for another video. For our example, we just need two parameters. Let's create row and column. Now here we need to create the way to read and write data. This is pretty similar the way we use computer properties. We need to create a getter and a setter. For the getter is pretty straightforward. We just need to return the element in the row and the column. Let's do that. That's all. Now at this point, if you just leave this subscript as it is, this format will allow you just to give you read-only data. But in this case, we want a read-write access. So we need to create the setter. For the setter, it's also really simple. We need to use set. And then we need to identify what is the value that we want to change. So let's use again data row equal to new value. New value is the default value that you can get from the setter in the same way like computer properties. And that's all. That's a pretty straightforward example. So let's test that in the playground. Okay, we have the data. Now, how to access it? Well, again, it's like a function 
but with square brackets. In this case, we are not defining argument labels, so it's just as simple as marking what is the number of index that you want to get. Well, in this case, row, number of row and number of column. Let me show you that. It's as simple as, well, I want the row two and the column one. And that's all. If you have argument label, you could use row one and call two or one, sorry. But this is not the case. We want to keep it simple. And we will use the same format for the setter. Now let's run this. There you have it. You have number eight here. And after you're assigned a new value, now you have 111. This is the way to use a script. And there are many ways. The imagination is the limit. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about Swift, remember that we have a playlist in front of you and also in the description to see all the videos around Swift language, including genetics, protocols, opaque types, etc. It's a long list. That's all for me, guys. Thank you so much and have a great day.